during my time working in cybersecurity, I discovered that each cybersecurity professional has a different pathway to how they got here. Even during my time on the Tech Certified podcast, interviewing cybersecurity professionals and other tech professionals, I discovered that each individual took a different route to getting into the industry. But for someone looking to enter the cybersecurity industry, you could be thinking, what route should I take to becoming a cybersecurity professional? So in this video, let's discuss some of the pathways to becoming a cybersecurity professional and compare the cost of each of these pathways. Please enjoy this video. Okay, so pathways to cybersecurity. When we say pathway, what are we talking about? So the dictionary says, pathway, a way of achieving a specified result, a course of action. And of course, the result for us is getting into the cybersecurity field and becoming a cybersecurity professional. So the pathway is the way we're gonna achieve this. Now, of course, there are multiple pathways to entering the field of cybersecurity. And honestly, for most people who enter this field, they'll be taking multiple pathways. So they'll have the different pathways that I mentioned in this video. Most cybersecurity professionals will have done bits of more than one of them. And their pathway would, would consist of at least two of these combined. Now let's talk about our first pathway. And this pathway is formal education. In other words, university. Now, of course, we all know what university is, so I won't go into detail explaining that. And when we talk about the cost of this pathway, this is the most expensive pathway to take to getting into the field. It definitely has pros and cons. Let's look at some of the other features of this pathway of university. If you're taking this pathway into this field, you'll most likely be doing a degree in computer science or a cybersecurity degree directly or any other related degrees. Now, each of these degree programs are likely to take a minimum of three years. So of course, this is a massive commitment of time and money. Apart from time and money, there is a lot of hard work that goes into university. With exams, coursework and all the other things, it takes a lot of commitment and hard work. I don't know if everyone resonates with this, but I can say for myself and others that I've spoken to, university does not always provide everything needed to get into the field. A lot of the time it's massively theory and you still need to go through other pathways after you do university to really gain the skills you need to work in the role. Now the second pathway I want to talk about is boot camps and the programs. What is a boot camp? Boot camps are specialized intensive training programs which are aimed at rapidly increasing your knowledge and skills in a particular area. Boot camps can be pretty intensive and full on and it is aimed in taking you from zero to a very good level of understanding in a short space of time. Now make sure that when you're going on a boot camp, you find a really good one. I've heard mixed reviews about boot camps. Some of them have been amazing, others haven't been up to standard. Now boot camps and programs can definitely be costly but they are much cheaper than college and university degrees. Programs can be really well structured and help you go through the things you need to learn in a good order and help you really grasp what you need to learn. Now an example of a program is Symposia. Symposia is an end-to-end -end intelligence platform. It provides access to dynamic skills through mentorship and hands-on training. And Symposia happens to be <laughs> the sponsor of this video. Symposia's program equips you with the essential skills and knowledge to thrive in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity. And the thing is, you don't even need prior experience or technical skills to be a part of this program. Training helps you build the holistic understanding that you need to impact the organizations and drive success as a cybersecurity profession. You get the opportunity to learn from industry experts and to master in-demand skills. And this could be a great resource to launch your cybersecurity career with Symposia. If this interests you and you meet the requirements to be a part of this program, use the link in the description of this video and check it out. Now, the third pathway that I wanna talk about is being self-taught. And I always refer to this in my videos as independent learning. Now, of course, this is when you go by your own means to learn what you can online using 
online courses or even using things like YouTube and do your own practical labs from things you find online and bring your learning together yourself without a bootcamp or university or any other means. Now the funny thing about independent learning is that I personally feel like independent learning will be a part of every single person's journey regardless of whether you went to university or you did a bootcamp or a learning program or whatever the case may be, you will still do independent learning. Now being self-taught in this industry of cybersecurity definitely involves doing courses online and I also feel like this will involve doing some certification. Get, getting certifications will be a big part of someone who is self-taught, especially if they don't have the university degree and they don't have the boot camp qualification, they will need some sort of qualification to put on their resume. And I feel like certifications are the perfect thing for someone who is going on that independent learning journey and being completely self-taught. Now there's loads of options when it comes to this. I have a few of them on my channel. If we speak about the ISC squared CC, that is a great place to start, or perhaps the Security Plus is a great place to start. And as you go on, you go into the more intermediate and expert level certification. Now being self-taught is definitely one of the cheaper pathways. However, although this is one of the cheaper pathways, it is unlikely that going from self-taught and breaking into cybersecurity will be completely free. You still have to pay for things like courses and certification. Despite these costs, it's definitely cheaper than both boot camps and learning programs and obviously cheaper than university. Now let's move on to our final pathway that I wanna talk about. Now I've put this pathway down as on the job learning or work experience. And this is a bit of an interesting one. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, how do you get work experience without having experience beforehand? Well, there are some cases where people have managed to work their way up from a really junior and entry level role that they happen to get or through getting an internship through networking and working their way up. And there are also cases of apprenticeships. If you've heard of apprenticeships, these are things where you basically get paid, not very much, but you get paid to learn whilst working. And so of course, this pathway into the industry is the cheapest of all pathways. There is no cost. In fact, in apprenticeships and internships, you actually get paid to do this. And the last pathway I'll mention is kind of a bonus pathway. And, and I'll call this switching careers. And this, as it says in the name, is when you switch careers from another industry and carry over the transferable skills to be able to work in cybersecurity. And this doesn't have to be other tech roles like tech support or cloud infrastructure or networking roles, which are the common ones. But this can also be roles outside of tech and cybersecurity completely. You could have amazing management skills or business skills that transfer into the cybersecurity space. Now, a lot of people might be under the impression that to work in cybersecurity, you need specific technical skills. There are definitely many skills outside of the technical that can lend you a role in the cybersecurity space. So those non-technical roles within cybersecurity and someone who has those transferable non-technical skills and is able to move into a cybersecurity role that is not technical is also a part of this pathway. I hope these pathways have been really helpful and interesting. I hope these will be able to spark some thoughts for those who are looking to get into cybersecurity and are thinking what is the best way for them to get there. I hope you've generally just enjoyed watching this video. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.